James Rosenstein of One Business World, and it's a great pleasure to introduce Mr. Bruce Rosenstein. Um, he's the managing editor of Leader to Leader, and he's going to be talking about very important examples of leaders shaping the future. Insights from Peter Drucker and Leader to Leader. So, Bruce, thank you very much, and I'm very happy to hand over to you. Okay, thank you very much, James, and thanks to Stanley and his, his um, colleagues, all of your colleagues. It's wonderful to be back here uh, presenting again for the conference. So, uh, as James said, my talk today will be uh, informed by my work on uh, Peter Drucker. I've been studying his work for seriously for 36 years now. Um, these are the uh, two of the things that inform my talk today, my two Drucker related books. I was very uh, fortunate to have um, interviewed Drucker um, several times, both for my books and also when I worked for USA Today um, newspaper. So I've written about him for USA Today, uh, many other publications and continue to write about him quite a bit. Uh, Create the Fu Your Future came out in 2013, Living in More Than One World came out in 2009. And um, you'll see the foreword for Living in, one, more, Living in More Than One World was written by Francis Hesselbein. And that leads me to the other thing that informs my talk today, which is uh, leader to leader. As James said, I'm managing editor. I've been managing editor for 11 years now. Uh, so Francis uh, Hesselbein is, uh, we'll hear a little more about her later in my talk. But Leader to Leader is co-published by the Francis Hesselbein Leadership Forum, which is now affiliated with the University of Pittsburgh. Uh, and the other co-publisher is uh, Wiley, John Wiley, a, a major um, international publisher. So those are the two things that will really inform my work today. So if, uh, Dr Drucker, for people who don't know about him, and you know, even though he was really a famous person, I find there's still some people today who don't really know about who he was or uh, what his great accomplishments were, but he was known as the father of modern management, among other things. He was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2002. That's the highest civilian honor in the country. He lived to just eight days short of his 96th birthday, and he was quite productive and quite generative. He really worked up until just pretty much the last few um, months of his life. So just very briefly to kind of give you a brief overview of Drucker's life, he was a consultant to major corporations. I've listed some of them there, uh, nonprofits, one of which was the Girl Scouts of the USA. And Francis Hesselbein uh, had been the CEO of the Girl Scouts of the USA. So that's how that uh, came about. He was the author of more than 40 books, millions of copies all over the world, many, many articles um, that you can still find. You can obviously find his books, but you can also find a lot of his articles online. We, at Leader to Leadership, Leader to Leader, have uh, published uh, some of his work. And of course, he was a professor most recently uh, at the Drucker School, named after him in Claremont, California. So uh, another reason, uh, very organic reason of why uh, I included him here today is because he was very, very tied to the concept of entrepreneurship. He wrote a classic book in 1985 that's still used, still cited, called Innovation and Entrepreneurship. Uh, I would recommend everyone watching today, watching this Zoom presentation, either today or if you're watching it later on on video, to, um, to read this book. It's just a fantastic book. So you can see some of the quotes I have on there, um, but tying it into things like um, decision making and that you know, it's kind of behavior rather than a pers uh, personality trait. And this really key concept as change as the norm and as healthy. And I've been uh, just very uh, knocked out by all the things I've heard today. I've uh, watched quite a few of the presentations today. And so you're hearing all these things as change being a big part of what you're hearing, but change in other things, kind of a kaleidoscope of things about um, the world of entrepreneurship and about leadership and how those things dovetail. So I think that you'll find um, a lot of resonance in what I have today, along with what you've heard before today, uh, earlier today, but also uh, what I dare to say you'll hear over the next um, four or five days as well. And this idea of 
higher prote you know, moving things, moving your resources. And we've heard so much today about resources, but moving, moving them from areas of low productivity and yield to higher productivity um, and yield. Uh, another quote, this is a great book called Management Revised Edition, uh, 2008. He wrote it with, uh, unfortunately now the late Professor Joseph A. Masiarello, a colleague of his at the Drucker School. And so you see that about, you know, visions, some of these things that we've heard about from people today, things like that really did talk about vision and what might be a higher standard and going beyond your limitations. Uh, we've heard some great things about that today. So uh, if that resonates with you, I would definitely recommend that book. It's, it's quite large. Uh, it's uh, 500 and some pages, but the initial version of that book in 1974, which is kind of my intro to Peter Drucker back in the 80s, uh, that book is 839 pages. And I would, if you really get into Drucker, I would recommend that book um, as well. So in the second book, in my second book, uh, Drucker did so much on the future, but he never wrote an entire book about the future. So I decided to do that. And I decided to, uh, I interviewed other people um, besides the interview material I had for Peter, but I decided to come up with what I uh, called his 10 elements of the future based on his life and work. And again, I think I should remind people that Drucker himself did not sit down there and say, you know, I wrote these 10, here are my 10 elements of the future. These are the things that I came up with from his work based on my study, my interviews with him, my interviews with other people, my close reading of his books um, and articles. Uh, you know, one of them is just mindset. We won't go through all, all of the 10 today, but um, this idea of mindset that you have this forward focused mindset and you keep the future in mind and everything you do, all the um, decisions that you made. Um, and yet, you know, you keep the present moment in mind. You, yes, you have to look for the future, but you have to deal with the present moment and know what your present reality is. Uh, change, as you see, is another uh, reflection. We've heard this from other speakers today. You know, you kind of have to take the time to reflect in order uh, on what's happening now and what has happened in the past in order to go for the future. Uh, and one other thing I'll uh, mention is that one of these, uh, one part of this is the idea of innovation and entrepreneurship. So that's part of these 10 elements in the future. And again, these are described much uh, more detail in the book and also in other things um, that I've written. Now in shaping the future of your organization, this is a quote that I, I like to kind of call a tough love quote the Drucker had for organizations. This was from a, a book that was not really well known called The Executive in Action. And really what it was is three books put together uh, in a kind of giant hardback with a new introduction. But he had this great quote, which when you look at it uh, is quite something. So the seemingly most successful business of today is a sham and a failure if it does not create its own and different tomorrow. It must innovate and recreate its products or services, but equally the enterprise itself, uh, which really must seem very tough to a lot of um, well-known and big and you know, important organizations back in 1996 when he said this. But think about what happened. Um, <clears throat> you know, we did have the, a lot of uh, speakers today have talked about um, the, you know, the recession we had in 2008 and 2009. So look what happened. You know, you had to have, uh, you had banks going out of business. You had car companies nearly going out of business. You had uh, car companies and banks and all sorts of other things needing bailouts to stay in business. So really what he kind of predicted in a way did happen and only about um, 10 years later. It was, it was really quite something that he, um, that he thought in those terms. Um, now, I want to shift into Francis Hesselbein, who uh, now the co-editor-in-chief of Leader to Leader, but really everything started with her. Uh, as I said, she's a longtime associate of, of Peter. You see, I put one of her books on the screen, More Hesselbein on Leadership. Uh, she has several books. I would recommend all of them. Uh, she was a president, Presidential Medal of Freedom uh, recipient um, before actually Peter did, uh, Bill Clinton. Uh, gave her that honor. 
Uh, she was the founding president of the Drucker Foundation. So what, what is now the Francis Hesselbein Leadership Forum originally was the Drucker Foundation for Nonprofit Management, and they started in 1990. So as I said, she was she is co-editor and chief of the Leader to Leader. She was the former CEO of the Girl Scouts, and she was named in uh, 2015 by Fortune as one of the world's 50 greatest leaders. So it's a real honor to work with her, just as it was a real honor to be able to, to interview um, um, Peter Drucker. Um, so uh, from one of uh, Francis's columns, this is from winter 2015, Leader to Leader, but also in the book, more Hesselbein on leadership. And, you know, really, I talked earlier about present reality, understanding your present reality and thinking of the present moment. So I think one of the things that Francis did uh, in this very short segment is really to say, you know, for leadership, you know, what does leadership comprise, you know, outside of, let's say, the technical aspects and what um, type of, uh, let's say, organization you might be in, and I should say leader to leader, we write for all uh, types of, you know, business, nonprofits, uh, uh, military leaders can profit from what we do, uh, nonprofit leaders, leadership leaders, and the articles are written by leaders for leaders. So we don't have uh, freelance writers, we don't have staff writers. Uh, Francis writes a column, uh, now she writes it with uh, our uh, new co-editor in chief, Sarah MacArthur. So we're really kind of laying these things out, you know, listening, so important, these things that we don't want them to just be buzzwords, work-life balance, these things that are very success, very important. Um, you see this idea of sharing successes. This came up earlier today, you know, kind of giving credit where credit is due, accepting responsibility um, for shortfalls and, and failures. So um, I would really, really recommend uh, getting more into Francis's material through her books and of course through, through Leader to Leader. So as we go on, um, Jim Cousis and Barry Posner, some of you may be familiar with them, tremendous thought leaders. Um, they've written for Leader to Leader several times. This particular quote I chose uh, is from a book though called The Truth About Leadership, a really great book if you're not familiar with it from 2010 because it gets into this idea that leadership is inherently future oriented. You know, we're trying to move ourselves and our organizations and beyond that to a better future state. And so this great idea that leaders are custodians of the future. Uh, you know, you're concerned about tomorrow's world and people want to know that. The people that you lead want to know that there is some good tomorrow there and that you have a good idea in terms of working with them um, how to do it. So um, uh, for those of you who aren't all that familiar with Cousins and Posner, I would certainly recommend besides this book, they have a kind of a franchise book called The Leadership Challenge, which has been, uh, it's now in its at least sixth edition uh, and it's been coming out for more than 20 years, um, really tremendous material. And I would recommend you're kind of delving into that. Now, before I go to leader, uh, more into leader to leader, I want to put in something else. And this is something that I also talked about at the Young Entrepreneurs Conference back in April. Uh, as it happens in a bit of kind of synchronicity today, today happens to be the 35th um, um, birthday uh, or, or anniversary of the founding of AIIP, the Association of Independent Information Professionals. And this is a group of their information entrepreneurs. Uh, and I, I raise this for a couple of reasons. One is uh, possibly people on this call partnering up with AIIP in some way, and they're AIIP.org, um, but also possibly maybe even joining it because uh, it's just a tremendous um, organization of information entrepreneurs. Um, another thing too is, you know, we heard from some of the speakers today, this value that we derive from knowing about uh, markets, knowing about potent competitors, and potential competitors. And, you know, and how are you gonna find that out? Now, there, there are lots of ways and certainly in some ways you can do that um, on your own, but in some ways too, it's kind of good to partner with people like AIIP and there's a, there's a directory on there um, that you can learn more about them. You know, there's a term that, uh, and not all these people in AIIP do it, but there's a term called competitive intelligence. Um, 
Sometimes that term has uh, not so great um, connotations, but mostly it does. Uh, and you know, how do you learn about competitors? How do you learn about uh, potential competitors? So um, I posit that you learn about it through one of the ways anyway, is through organizations like AIP. Um, I was um, privileged back in 2016 to uh, be awarded the Roger Summit Lecture Award. Um, and one of the reasons I bring this up and I gave the, their annual conference in Pittsburgh in 2016, I gave the Roger Summit uh, Lecture. I got to meet Roger himself. One of the reasons I show this, here's a picture of Roger, is he was a super entrepreneur. Uh, he lives in California, he lives in Silicon Valley, where his company, Dialog, is, it still exists, but it's part of a bigger company called ProQuest. But Dialog was just an amazing information company, pre, you know, pre-internet, uh, pre-web, uh, migrated that way, but it's a, a kind of a fee-based company. But he was a total visionary, uh, and he and I are both, uh, you know, kind of Peter Drucker followers. So I would recommend kind of looking into AIP, but also kind of looking into uh, Roger and what he did. So uh, moving on now back to Leader the Leader, um, this was a great article that I worked on with Dana Greenberg, Kate McCone Sweet, and H. James Wilson, uh, all of whom, are, or I believe at least uh, Dana and Kate, teach at Babson College in Massachusetts, which many of you know is a super hotbed for um, learning about entrepreneurship. So, you know, really saying here's leadership, here's leadership in entrepreneurship, different way of thinking, um, value creation, uh, thinking back to uh, Dr. Uh, Omar Fisher's uh, great presentation this morning about the future of money and value uh, creation. So what do we really mean by that? Um, and then also things that we heard from other uh, speakers today, self-awareness, um, starting from, you know, who I am, uh, identity. We, we heard that from several speakers today. So I would recommend um, that article. They also wrote a great book on this topic, published by Vera Kohler, which is the publisher that did my first book, Living in More Than One World, the one that um, has the foreword by Francis Hesselbein. So a couple of other people, Tom Horan, who I also knew through the uh, Drucker world. He used to be the dean at the Drucker School. He's uh, the dean at the University of Redlands now for their MBA program. Great article called uh, The Art of Purposeful Leadership. So this idea of beginning with the individual, and I think we have to um, recognize that, that we're kind of at least starting with things on the individual level, but then kind of moving out from there. And again, it gives these things, you know, whether you call them soft skills or what have you, character, competence, commitment, and compassion. So again, a great article. Uh, same thing with Tim Tobin's article, Getting Leadership uh, Right. So uh, Tim is a, um, you know, we have a lot of thought leaders, but we also have a lot of action leaders. And he's certainly one, he's a hotel company, hospitality executive, uh, but also written some great um, books, including for Barrett Kohler. So um, he comes again with this five foundational act um, activities of great leadership. So again, just kind of knowing more about leadership. How are you gonna set, how are you gonna shape the future? So this idea of setting a clear um, direction, actively listening, getting back to what um, Francis said, self-development. Um, and again, recognizing talent and rewarding performance that also kind of get back, gets back to what um, Francis said in her article. So uh, I would recommend anything that you see by, um, by Tim Tobin. Um, Bob Johansson, uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with him, he's, he's written a couple of articles for us, so it's great for me to get to uh, work with him. Bob's also uh, produced a number of books for, uh, for Barrett Kohler. Uh, he was uh, formerly the leader of a great group out in Silicon Valley called the Institute for the Future. So he, you know, basically his whole life has been around the future. And how do you shape things for the future? Um, whether it's yourself, your organization, or kind of going beyond that. So this idea of uh, you know, disruption, we heard that earlier in, uh, in talks today. But you know, managing your energy and well-being, if, you, if you're not taking care of yourself, you can't be um, a good leader. So all these things that maybe you, know, you don't always think of in terms of um, leadership roles, but um, you know, interpersonal skills, uh, financial well-being. I mentioned the talk earlier about the future of money. Um, 
spiritual well-being as well. So Bob is really kind of a, a fascinating guy and I would recommend his work. Um, Torn Perez, a younger leader, as you see, refer, re reflections from a younger leader, um, but still leading a, a, a legacy. So, you know, here, here's a guy, you know, a really young guy, but thinking in terms of leading a legacy. But something very important here is that, you know, can your employees see themselves in the work that they're doing? Do they see people um, who are, you know, somewhat like them or think somewhat like them within your organization? What are the uh, uh, demographics like? Uh, very, very interesting article. It's really great for me to um, work with him, you know, kind of next generation um, leadership, I would, I would say. Um, uh, Hortense Legento, who is from France originally, but has lived all over the world, um, has been a leader of companies, an entrepreneur. She talked about that in her article, um, just published a great book. She's, she's more now kind of on the consulting and the coaching end. Uh, but this great idea of letting go of your restrictions and old beliefs. So in terms of shaping the future, that is really tough, I would say. Uh, it's much easier said than done. She talks about transforming your leadership mindset. Um, but again, we think of these things, we keep these things in mind uh, as difficult as they might be. So again, it's not something technical at all, but it's something that is difficult in terms of restrictions um, and your belief system. Um, I include Mark Goldsmith because this idea of uh, social entrepreneurship. He was a, a business leader. He was also a business entrepreneur, but he retired just kind of like when uh, Francis retired from the Girl Scouts and then co-started what's now the Drucker, uh, was the Drucker Foundation, now the Francis has to buy leadership for him. And Mark started um, GOSO, getting out and staying out <clears throat> about being a social entrepreneur. So. We don't have a lot of, <clears throat> excuse me, time to talk about that, but um, I would recommend his article to you in Leader to Leader. It just came out in our fall 2021 issue. Uh, he also just published a book uh, through Forbes Media that I would certainly recommend. Um, but an important thing here is keeping this idea of transferable skills. And I guess this would really be not just moving from you know, business to the world or business entrepreneurship to social entrepreneurship, but almost anything. But since the world of social entrepreneurship is so important, keeping in mind that you know you can kind of transfer, uh, have those transferable skills. Uh, April Rennie, another really fascinating person, uh, also a bear color author, as it happens. Great book that came out not that long ago. Uh, she has this whole idea of flux. She has this you know huge amount of uh, followers that she interacts with, you know, all the time um, online and in person. Um, but this idea that you talked about in our article, Leader to Leader, this idea of um, kind of seeing what's invisible, looking around the edges. So not just seeing what is visible, but to see what's invisible. Uh, and that's quite hard. So um, I, again, you know, we could go on all day about this. We have very limited time. I want to put up all my contact information. Um, please you know, contact me and add me on LinkedIn. Uh, and Twitter, there's my email address. I'd be happy to talk to you kind of about anything. And James, if there's room for a little bit of uh, Q&A or whatever, I'm happy to do that. Okay, well, Bruce, thank you very much. This is such an inspiring presentation. And so many important issues that uh, need to be you know, understood. And I noticed at the beginning that uh, talking about you know, Drucker's career, he did consult with GE. Right, yes. And I was wondering if at that time, he met another person considered as a leader named Jack Welch. He did. He and did. how did that go? Because there could, have, uh, there could have been some differences. Yeah, I think that, you know, my understanding is, and now with, with Jack Welch, he may or may not have had a formal consulting at that point, I'm not sure. But, you know, Welch was on record as saying that, you know, he got the idea from Peter of being, you know, you have to be one or two in an industry in order to stay in it. If you're not, uh, it becomes too marginal for you and you have to get out. So I think that, you know, I would have loved to have heard, you know, been a fly on the wall for conversations between the two. Yeah. Uh, but somehow they must have gotten along and he got that great idea 
uh, the Drucker archives out in California, you know, kind of allied to the Drucker School. I believe if you go on the Drucker archives website, there is a letter, which I once found anyway, a sort of a handwritten note from Jack Welch um, to Peter kind of talking about that. So it could be if you, they might have digitized that and you might be able to find that online. Yeah. Well, there's, there's plenty to talk about. Yeah, I like your reference to Kaizen. That's very, Kaizen, exactly. very inclusive approach. So all of this is something for a conversation to continue. And again, uh, Bruce, I thank you very much. You're quite and, welcome. Uh, thank you for having me. Look forward to further conversations. Thanks again. Thank you. Bye-bye.